Okay, talking about uh, Rome, because um, uh, after we get done with the Greeks, talk about the Roman Empire, and that's going to finish up our ancient civilizations to talk about. About Julius Caesar's quote, I came, I saw, I conquered. So talk to, de talk to text on that first. Now we'll talk about Julius Caesar a little bit, but first let's start with, that's not, yes, there we go. Where Rome came from. Now there's basically two legends about the founding of Rome. The most popular legend is that two demigods, Romulus and Remus, uh, f came to the Tiber River in 753 BCE. Uh, now these two, you know, were raised by a wolf, um, and when they grew up, they started to found the city, and they had an argument over who was going to rule the city, and Romulus killed his brother Remus, and he named the city after himself. So the city is Rome after Romulus. Now, another legend, this is the most popular one, but another legend, and this actually has some historical uh, sound evidence behind it, is that Roma had traveled with Anines uh, and other survivors of Troy after Troy fell. So, Troy fell, the Greeks did not kill all the Trojans, some of them escaped from the city, got on ships, or in another legend, they actually traveled across land. But this legend says that they went by ships, traveling across the Mediterranean, looking for a place to settle a city. Now, they arrived on the Tiber River, and the men wanted to keep going. But Roma and the other women wanted to stay. So Roma led all the women down to the Trojan ships, and they burned them. And they were so effective in burning all the ships that the Trojans were essentially stranded. And they named the city Rome after Roma because she's the one that was responsible for them being there. Um, coincidentally, if we look at the records, it, the timeline works really well for this legend. Now, the first people that settled Rome, be it Roma, be it uh, two demigods, uh, they just did not choose this because it's by a river. They chose it because it was a very good area to live. One, there's seven hills in Rome. These seven hills make it very easy to defend, and a river on another side. So, easy to defend, the soil was very fertile, there was a good source of water, this is a great place to live. You can grow food, you can raise animals, plenty of water, easy to defend, good place. Uh, the Tiber River flows from the Apennines Mountains through Rome and into the Tyrian Sea. Um, so, like I said, great location. Now, as times passed, Rome's location gave it several advantages. And if you ever get into uh, the restaurant business, if you're going to start your own restaurant, the three most important things about having a restaurant are location, location, and location. Location is key, and Rome has an excellent location. First of all, it is at the center of the peninsula that makes Rome. Rome's right there in the center. Second, it's at the center of the Mediterranean Sea. So in the Mediterranean Sea, they're smack dab here, right in the center of it. So they have easy access to everybody else. Like Greece would have to travel an awful long way to get to Spain. But for uh, Rome, not that big of a deal. And they are the center of the known Western world. So out of the Western world, they're right smack dab right here in the center. So location, 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 Rome had some really big advantages there. Now, Rome was settled around 900 B.C., could have been a little bit earlier, 700 B.C., or I'm sorry, a little bit later, 700 B.C., but it grows slowly. Around 600 B.C., people who called themselves the Etruscans 
took over Rome. They came from up north and came down the side of Italy to gain a lot, a lot of power. Over. And you can hear, see here, Ruma, spelled a little bit differently. But they took over. Now the Etruscan kings ruled until the Romans revolted about 90 years later in 509 BC, driving the Etruscans out. Um, they did, however, adopt a lot of the ideas that the Etruscans had because there was a lot of things that they liked. Number one, they kept many gods. They used a lot of the same gods that the Greeks used. So if you did your Greek god poster, you were supposed to find uh, the Roman counterpart because sometimes they changed the names, sometimes they didn't. Adopting the Greek alphabet. So the Greek alphabet uh, is used by the Romans. It's a great alphabet. Why reinvented it? And of course, probably the most important thing, the toga. Uh, the Romans kept the togas. So in a lot of architectural idea from the Greeks. So sometimes if you're looking at Greek buildings and you're looking at Roman buildings and you're looking at pictures of uh, Greeks and ancient Romans, it's really hard to tell them apart. Because uh, these ideas were common in the area and the Romans liked them. Now, after ridding themselves of the Etruscan kings, the Romans vowed that they would never again have a king. Because why would you want a king if they're not going to be nice to you? So, the Romans formed a new form of government called a republic, where leaders would rule for the people. So, they have a democracy in Greece, in Athens, where the citizens get to vote on things, and they get to rule. But here... People actually rule, are put in place to rule for the people. But you don't have just a king. They're selected. So a republic is citizens elect people to run the government for them. That's what we have in this country. So you can't say that we're just a democracy. We're a republic, a democratic republic. So the people elect some of our own to run the government for us. Now, the Roman Republic had two chief official, officials called consuls. They were the most powerful part, of, but they ruled, kind of like our president, but the most powerful part of the government was the Senate, because the Senate pretty much told them what to do. The Senate's advice was always followed by the consuls, and the consuls are the chief officers. Now, the Senate was made up of 300 men called patricians. A patrician is a member of a wealthy upper class, if you remember that from earlier, and a plebeian is an ordinary citizen. So in order to be in the Senate, you kind of had to have money to start with. Now, the council's power was limited to only one year. So they elected new councils every year. As you know, that's not a lot of time, and in this country, we chose to have our president run for four years, and then they will pick another one. Um, both the councils, because there's two of them, they have to agree before any action can be taken. Uh, if one council did not like a plan, he could veto it, and that's it. It's over. So they both have to agree to get anything done. So veto is a rejection of a plan or action by a person in power. That is a power that our president has over Congress. He can veto laws that he does not like. Now, a problem arose when the councils could not agree, and it's an emergency. For example, you're being invaded. In this case, a dictator could be appointed, but only for six months. So they'd have a dictator, but only for six months. So a dictator would have total control of the government. At the end of that six months, he's got to relinquish his powers and things go back to normal. So Rome was over, was able to take over Italy through war, Patricians used the riches captured from small farms to make huge ones. They also used slaves in the, uh, from the war as farm laborers. So Rome, as they expanded, they gobbled out the wealth in a new area and used it. And that's what's keeping Rome growing. Every time they expand it to a new area, they gobble up everything. And it's like a resource for them, money for them. Now, around 120 BC, Rome was in terrible trouble. Private armies 
fought for power. So you no longer had armies just fighting for Rome, controlled by the Senate. That's not happening necessarily. Councils no longer respected the veto, and they just kind of did things that they wanted to do. A slave revolt, led by, led by this guy here, Spartacus, is actually, this is an older movie of Spartacus, and then the uh, TV show of Spartacus. He threatened Rome itself, and he formed his own slave army that was pretty scary and had taken over some cities in the Roman Empire. Well, not an empire yet, in the Roman Republic. Now, it looked like Rome would fall apart, except to fight Spartacus and the slave, the slave revolt, revolt, the richest man in the world, Marcus Linnaeus Crassus, actually bought his own army. And with his own army, he is going to defeat Spartacus. Now, there's three main guys that have control of armies at this time. One is Julius Caesar, but he's not in Italy. And then there's Pompey, uh, but Pompey was not very effective against the slave. Marcus Linnaeus Crassus, he is responsible for saving the Roman Republic. I'm Marcus Asinius Crassus, no rich man can ever surpass us. Wanted people to say I was brave, but that's my first fight in Hickney Naked. Living there could be a pauper's nightmare, but if you're rich like me then you don't care. I call my slave to the cave to ask it, to cook a piece and lower in a basket. There's Romans think they're minted, but they ain't rich like me. You can't call yourself loaded till you can buy an army. Ran Rome with Pompey and Caesar, they're more famous than me. But I'm the world's richest geezer, there's no one richer than me. I'm minted. I back General Sulla, every day my wallet got fuller. Took the land off of enemies to flog it, use the cash to fill my pocket. If I heard of a house on fire, I'd rush over be a quick cash buyer. My fireman would then dash the flames, boom, another big house to my name. There's Romans think they're minted, but they ain't rich like me. You can't call yourself loaded till you can buy an army. Ran Rome with Pompey and Caesar, they're more famous than me. But I'm the world's richest geezer, there's no one richer than me. I bought an army for fighting Spartacus At the start my men lost Hearticus I killed one in ten in a killing spree So they were more scared of me than the enemy Smashed the slaves, it got real gory But then Pompey stole my glory To show it was me that crushed the horde Nailed up the slaves like on a billboard Not enough to be a politician Why triumph to my army on a mission Got owned by the Parthian Persians They killed me, but you'll hear two versions The famous one's quite hard to follow They gave me boiling gold to swallow But the true way they made me pay They used my head as a prop in a play Embarrassing. There's Romans think they're minted, but they ain't rich like me. You can't call yourself loaded till you can buy an army. Ran Rome with Pompey and Caesar, they're more famous than me. But I'm the world's richest geezer, there's no one richer than me. Ha <laughs> ha, I love it. Tell me you don't love it. <laughs> so, Crassus, his first battles with Spartacus actually ended in defeats. Uh, and his soldiers were not doing what they were supposed to do. So he took a very old military tactic or custom called decimation. And if you ever heard of anything being decimated, it's like they really got beat up bad if they got decimated. But the soldiers were punished in this way. And this is what would happen. One out of every ten of the guilty unit would be beaten to death by their followers, their fellow soldiers. And this is often by doing having ten guys get in a circle. They'd have a bag with rocks in it. Each guy would pull out a rock. One of the rocks is painted white. The guy with the white rock would get beaten to death by the other nine. And if the other nine refused to do it, you had other soldiers around you with swords and spears, and they would quickly kill you. It was a very harsh tactic but it worked, because uh, Crassus' soldiers did not lose again against Spartacus. So the soldiers feared Crassus so much, they'd never again be defeated by the uh, Spartacus' army. 
Spartacus was eliminated. Um, and this is kind of harsh, but Pompey was kind of trying to steal the glory for Crassus's victory. So Crassus wanted everybody to know that he was the one that defeated Spartacus. So going from Rome south along the coast is the Appian Way. And along the Appian Way, Crassus took six the 6,000 man slave army, dead or alive, and he crucified each one. So as you walk down the Appian Way, you would see all these slaves that were crucified by Crassus, and that's what you get for doing a slave revolt. <clears throat> Everybody understood that it was Marcus Linnaeus Crassus <clears throat> that defeated the slaves, and not Pompey. Rotten Romans. To make sure legions wouldn't panic and run away from a battle, there was a particularly nasty punishment if they did. Legions! General Pompey! Legions of Rome! You have fled in the face of the enemy! The worst crime an army can commit! You shall be punished! Right out, I shall not run away from Spartacus! One hundred times! No, that's not going to be enough this time. A thousand times! No. One million times! Look, lines aren't enough. We need to do something that will ensure they never run away again. I suggest... Decimation. Stay behind after battle! Every day this week! That's detention. What's decimation? It's where every tenth soldier is beaten to death by his fellow legionnaires. Wow, that sounds pretty strict. Every tenth man in line shall be killed! On my order, I want... What's going on? Nobody wants to be tenth in line, General Pompey. Right. I need to find a way of choosing fairly. I know. Listen up! We will draw lots! Each soldier will write his name on a piece of paper! The name's General Pompey. I shall now draw the name of the first person to be beaten to death! My enormous buttus! Where is my enormous buttus? It's behind you, General. I don't think that's a real name. Me mama stinkus! Does no one know me mama stinkus? Yes, we all know she does. That's another fake name. But to be honest, General Pompey, I think they're all fake. Are you telling me they haven't put a single real soldier's name in there? Well, there is one real name. Excellent. Read that out. I don't think they wrote their own names down. Stop stalling, General. This has gone long enough already. Soldiers! The next name you hear will be the first Roman to be beaten to death! General Pompey! General Pompey there really did kill off one in ten of his troops for fleeing from the enemy. It was brutal, but it worked. They didn't run away from their next battle. The Romans won! So kind of harsh. Now, of all this chaos, the stage is set for a dictatorship. They need one guy in charge to control Rome and get things going again. In steps Julius Caesar. He had returned from defeating the Gauls in France. He had a very large, very loyal army because they loved their general. Julius Caesar defeated his opposition, General Pompey, and was declared dictator in 48 BC. And it's actually kind of a really long, drawn-out thing. It didn't just happen because there's rules about uh, a general could not bring his army near Rome. And the reason is they didn't want Rome taken over by that army. And Julius Caesar didn't bring his own army, but he brought a few guys. And So it's really an interesting story, but we're not going to get too much into it here. Now, 
Julius Caesar, Caesar made many important governmental reforms. He restored order um, and became Cleopatra's boyfriend in Egypt. And he was a strong leader, and he actually named himself dictator for life. Now, many of the Romans felt like they were being ruled by a king, and they could not tolerate this. However, all of them knew that Julius Caesar was an excellent leader. He was doing an absolutely phenomenal job. He wasn't treating people harshly. He was just doing a good job. But it did appear that he was a king. So on March 15th, 44 BC, Caesar, Caesar attended a meeting in the Senate. The senators gathered around on them. They suddenly pulled out knives and they stabbed him to death. One of our most famous Roman generals was called Julius Caesar. He went all the way to the top, but what goes up must come down. Don't miss this week's News of the Empire exclusive. It's our Caesar special. He defeated the Gauls in France and invaded Britain. I came, I saw, I conquered. I, I caught a cold. The weather was terrible, so I came home again. Now, Rome's greatest general has gone from hero to zero. Yes! JC's reputation is in meltdown because he started going out with the Queen of Egypt. Has Cleopatra really stolen his heart? So what if she has? <laughs> My wife won't mind. We reveal the truth behind the rumours. Has Cleo really had Caesar's baby? Well, here's a clue. He's called Caesarian. He has got my nose, I suppose. <laughs> oh, there, there. It's not that big. All right. Plus, it's a fashion faux pas, as Caesar is spotted wearing these red boots, just like the last king of Rome. We ask, is Caesar getting too big for his own boots? I just like the colour. It doesn't mean to say I want to be king. What? Okay, so I have to declare myself dictator for life, but... And exclusive! The knives are out for Caesar. In our assassination pull-out special, we list the senators plotting to stab him in the back. Wait a minute, who wants to kill me? Find out tomorrow. What? No, 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 seriously, who wants to kill me? Only in this week's News of the Empire. A cracking good read, although it is all in Latin. It's true. Caesar started wearing red leather boots, just like the ancient Roman kings, and they were hated by the people of Rome. <laughs> the last one, Tarquinius Superbus, had been so evil, they got rid of kings altogether. <laughs> hey, good name though, Superbus. <laughs> Ratus Superbus. <laughs> I rather like that, suits me. Anyway, Caesar really put his foot in it, and ended up, well, getting assassinated. <laughs> Now, after Caesar is assassinated, civil war is going to break out because now who's going to be in charge? So there's a lot of fighting going on. Mark Anthony, Caesar's number one guy, would end up with Cleopatra. And they were defeated by Octavian. So Mark Anthony on one side, he was the sec kind of like the second in command. And Octavian... Uh, who was later received the title of Augustus, uh, is going to be the new ruler, and he becomes the first emperor of Rome. So, the Senate awarded, and it's actually Caesar's son, uh, Octavian, they gave him the title of Augustus, and they made him the first emperor of Rome. This, I find, is extremely ironic. Because the Romans, that did not want a king, that actually killed killed someone that was acting like a king, Julius Caesar, who was doing an outstanding job. They killed him, replaced him with his son, and made his son emperor, which is why they killed Caesar. So I really don't understand that. They have a hard time defeating that. So the Roman Republic is dead, and it is replaced with the Roman Empire. And this occurs pretty darn close uh, to our common era. Now, like I said, it's kind of ironic that Julius Caesar was assassinated for being a dictator, and the Senate turned around and they appointed one permanently. In a time of conflict... Sire, we have Mark Antony and Cleopatra cornered at Actium. We could end this civil war with one blow. 
Only one man could defeat Mark Antony, a powerful Roman general, and Cleopatra, the queen of Egypt. I am Emperor Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus Divi Filius Augustus. Augustus, I'm Emperor Augustus. And I shall have a victory at Actium that will echo through history. The story of Rome's greatest military leader. What's your name? Agrippa. Bless you. I'd like you to take care of the details for me. Sorry, when you say details... You know, the battle, the fighting. I'd like you to go and win the battle for me. It's likely to be sunny and I don't want to get sunburnt, so... Right, so I go and... Yeah. 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 Fine. Augustus, he rebuilt a city and founded an empire. Sire, through your leadership we have destroyed the enemy! Well, yeah. it wasn't really his leadership. I mean, I... You know what, fine, carry on. Yes! I shall build Rome anew. Creating the greatest city the world has ever seen. Yes! Can you sort the details, um, thingy? Agri Bless you. You know, the buildings, the roads, the sewers, the baths, that sort of thing. I don't want to go outside. I'm worried I might be hit by lightning. Right, so I go then. Oh, and can you pay for the food and bathing for the people out of your own pocket? Yeah. Emperor, you are too generous. Really? Augustus, his achievements would be remembered through all eternity. That's nice. New? Yes. Uh, Arthur? Agrippa. Bless you. I'm having it copied and placed in every major city in the Empire. I call it the Res Gestae. It's a list of my achievements. How I won battles, built Rome, and created an Empire. You didn't do that. I did that. Thought it says here. Augustus, the story of the greatest leader ancient Rome ever had, and his friend, um, did uh, you... Now read me a bedtime story, you know I can't sleep without one. Once upon a time there was a famous king who made his best friend do all the actual work, and his name was Agrippa. Bless you. Oh! Augustus, the movie. I found Rome a city of brick, and left it a city of marble. Well, with a bit of help from what's his name. What's wrong with Adrian? So that is the end of our slideshow on the first part for the Romans. Um, look at, I have attached the uh, notes for it, and there's questions at the end. And go over those, because we will do the same as we did for the Greeks. Okay, have a great day.